When I was younger, I always imagined myself being a singer. I actually dreamt of becoming a basketball player. I've always wanted to be a pilot. When I was younger, uh, growing up, I had a real passion for drawing, a lot of uh, painting. My ideal job was always to be a lawyer. I always imagined that I would be in law and I would be like working for people. I don't know, I didn't really have any dreams. I didn't think about goals or anything like that. I just did certain things that I like to do, like hobbies and um, singing, dancing, and sports. When I was really little, I was immediately introduced to math. Uh, I did not attend a preschool. I worked with my parents at home, and we did flashcards, we did um, sample problems, and since day one, I just loved doing the math. I wanted to be a teacher and a doctor, and I liked both equally, but I never really knew or cared that I could do both or either. I just, it was just something I enjoyed doing as a hobby. Children should not do something as a career choice that they don't like. And vocational school offers the opportunity for people to apply for that skill. I believe that for students to learn, you want them to learn when they're younger. Because when they're younger, they have less responsibilities. They have less worries. So why not use that time in their mind to make them learn? They can learn. They can learn, you'd be surprised, but they have to be exposed to the material correctly. If you dream you want to be an owner of a company, or you want to be a star, a drama, or if you want to be a computer whiz, if that's what you want to be, keep that dream li alive and keep that fire burning. We know that our students are successful in college. Some of the national data tells us that youngsters who attend career and tech ed programs have a lower dropout rate in high school, have higher academic achievement than their peers in, in regular education, and have higher success rates in college and post-secondary. So career and tech ed really does a fantastic job in preparing youngsters, not only for college and careers, but for, for life in, you know, in, in society. We don't only learn how to use cameras, we also learn directing, screenwriting, like we learn the whole entire process. We learn how to budget, like I've learned so much in film that people that are going into college are like have no idea about. So that puts me ahead of like all my peers, but it also allows me to like help teach them and have like them teach me things as well as they're learning. So I'm very thankful that we have a film program that teaches us a little bit of everything. Everything we do in every class allows us to gain a lot of experience because um, something that I've learned is you can't just learn through books. You can't just learn by reading or studying or writing down answers. It's all about the experience, working in uh, the specific field that you want to go in. Vocational education is the only form of education where if you're doing your job and you're doing it well, you'll never hear a kid say, why am I learning that? Because everything is relevant. The math, the science, the English that they are learning is all related to an occupational area that they show a great interest in. So they see the relevancy of math, the relevancy of English, the relevancy of science. And I think that's what fosters success on the parts. In talking about the last hundred years, somebody pointed out to me that I was there for one third of those hundred years, which is a little bit scary in terms of my role in the history of the school district. Um, but I think, you know, in Middlesex County, um, as is somewhat commonly known, uh, we are the oldest full-time county vocational school in the nation that we opened up in 1914. Um, at that time, the vocational schools were responding to basically an industrial society in an industrial county. So if you look at the pictures of our first schools, you'll see that they actually look like factories. And we occupied one of those schools until um, 
the 90s. You go in there and you'll see they actually look like, you know, a, a, a plant, you know, whether it be a carpentry plant or whether it be a plumbing facility or a machine shop. They were actually designed to look like the work setting that these young men and women would go into. And then at our Woodbridge School, you know, we had the boys' school, which was in New Brunswick, and the girls' school um, in Woodbridge, and we had segregated populations. Uh, and in both situations, they were training young people to enter directly into the workforce. So that was the goal at that point in time for, for vocational education. As the years went by and as our society changed and the county changed, we began to offer a broader range of, of, uh, of trade areas that we provided training in. And I guess in recent years, um, we've looked even further to new and emerging trade areas in the county and also the region and, and nationally. I didn't build anything alone. It was a group effort with a lot of people involved. We had the, the freeholders involved because they provided the money. We had the superintendent involved, and I as superintendent, and the superintendents before me involved in terms of building these facilities. We had teachers involved. We had parents involved who petitioned the, super, the, the freeholders to build these buildings. And they, we all came together to build them. But the things I'm most proud of, I guess, would be to initiate the special needs program from nothing to a little over a thousand to uh, hiring the first child study team members, from nothing to about five child study teams every time I retired, to putting in a, a performing arts program. We had it almost as an elective, and I made it a formal shop. And so therefore, we turned to one of the, I guess it's one of your dance studios, the smaller dance studio was the first shop we put, the laboratory we set up for the performing arts program. And that started from over there. Again, 30 years ago, the career path was graduate from Votech, go directly into employment. Now it's explore a career path, get some practical experience within the industry while you're a student, and hopefully move on to the next stage of your career you know, pathway. And that might be employment in the competitive labor market, it might be going to a county college, it might be going to a four-year university, or it might be going to a, a trade school, post-secondary trade school. Majors at East Brunswick Vocational School, we have automotive technology, we have machine tool technology, we have carpentry, we have graphic design, commercial art and illustration, we have baking, cosmetology, and architectural drafting. Uh, we also have a very successful School of the Arts program, which consists of theater, dance, digital filmmaking, and multimedia art and design. Specifically in the architectural technology program, the students learn to use several programs that are used in industry, one of them being AutoCAD, another being Revit, Inventor. They learn the calculations that are required for residential construction, some of the calculations required for commercial construction, electrical systems, plumbing systems. I think one of the most interesting and special parts of the Votech system is that over the course of four years, curricularly, um, when the freshmen come in, because I have so much time with them, I can take the kid with no training that says, I just feel right when I'm moving. Like when a kid says that to me in an interview and then during the audition, uh, I'm a sucker for that kid that just feels like they should be moving. And then essentially in four years, get them caught up and train them so that they're ready to apply to some of the top 10 BFA dance programs. She's very hard on us and because of that, we don't get big heads, we don't get egotistical, we're just very focused on bettering ourselves. And we, we try to better ourselves at every moment possible to be a better version of ourselves. And so she's, she's making every day valuable for her students. You can teach someone a skill, but you can't think of, teach them to think for themselves. In shop, they'll take a film and they'll analyze it and they'll break it down and then they'll think about, like, just to come up with a shot. How do I do an analysis? How do I think about what my character wants, what they need, what their circumstances are, and then how do I then transform that into an emotional story that people care about? There's a deeper level of thinking and investigation and um, 
rigor that comes with that because then they have to take that concept and then they have to be able to interpret it visually. Throughout my freshman year I was the first one to know how to screenwrite um, and it was pretty intense because I will never forget the first six or seven drafts that I had to do within my first two weeks. It was great and I never knew that I can actually write that much. So it was really good to know that, you know, there's a place that I can learn more on writing and what I can do with writing because um, not only can I write it, but I can put it on the screen now. The theater program is based on training artists as opposed to educating the general population in the arts. So it focuses on training those uh, students that are going to pursue arts as a career and we try to get them in a position where they can be viable artists in today's environment in the 21st century in the United States. The ultimate goal is to make viable artists. That means they have a voice, they understand the world and the career as it is and you know they can move on. I could talk about Bowtech as a school for people who want to better their career versus a school which is academic based because I feel like that has been a huge, huge, huge thing for me. Every shop teacher cares about their students and builds a relationship with their students that you can't find in other schools. I came in my sophomore year and I was a student who had no path, no direction. I just came to dance. I wasn't expecting much of it and the life lessons that I've learned, the teachings that have been taught to me, it's been astonishing. At the moment, I'm a part of the Tribeca Film Fellows. Uh, we basically go through the film festival, we get to meet all of these awesome directors, cinematographers, all these film people that kind of mentor us and help us like in the field. This summer I'm going to be attending the summer program from Tisch and NYU this year. Um, it's for the acting intensity. I also plan on going to the College of St. Rose next year and I'm going to be majoring in communications and then minoring in philosophy. I received the James Dixon Carr Scholarship at Mason Grove School of the Arts. They don't really give any scholarships at all and this is the second most prestigious scholarship that could be awarded for $40,000 and it's the greatest gift that I've ever received. Before film I never really found something that I felt like was right for me. I didn't feel like I was really good at anything. Like I really had a purpose. It was kind of like I'll go to school and then like bake some cookies and that's going to be your profit or go to school and then you're just going to be like your mom and like sell clothes in some store or something like I never thought that I would have like this opportunity to make something of myself. This particular school district gives all of our kids a place to shine to show really what they're all about. The Academy model uh, is a much smaller school uh, and focused on just one career. Uh, our school here is focused on engineering and our students uh, have, have the option to select either electrical, computer engineering, or civil mechanical engineering. Um, and it is very driven towards science and mathematics and again it's very small uh, and it's very focused. We are a different type of vocational school. Given that we have the academy, all our students graduate. All our students go to universities and go to college. But no matter what, what we teach here is in a way a trade. But it's a different kind of trade that requires colleges in order to get a job in a private industry. Initially when I came in, I thought I was a bit surprised because I did hear that um, there weren't a lot of females in the engineering field and I did happen to see a lot of girls in my class. Uh, but uh, Mr. Paterno made sure that we knew, hey, there won't be a lot of females in this field and I will proudly represent the female population. The number one thing the Academy taught me how to do is how to teach myself to learn. Uh, 
in the academy we're really independent uh, the teachers just are here to foster our growth they're not here to make us they're not here to force us to learn something specifically uh, we're taught that we can do whatever we want to do as long as we put our work into it we'll get through it students get good grades they have degrees and all that but when you put them in a real situation where they have to solve a problem that's the real test having problem solving skills and troubleshooting skills that's a gift that companies are willing to pay for so i think i prepare my students from the real world from the point of view of problem solving through the lab experiments and the project and the senior project the school has helped me a lot with um, my real world experiences and with my problem solving all of our teachers treat us very maturely and because of that we are sort of forced to be adults to work with everyone collaboratively and nicely and um, efficiently. The students here want to do their best in everything. They want to go in b above and beyond. They want to come to school every day to learn. Being here at the Academy has helped me develop public speaking skills, it's helped me develop problem solving skills, it's helped me develop a passion for learning. And that's where I really hope it takes me, the ability to keep learning and the ability to keep making a difference in people's lives. I have two students in Oxford, England. We have students in Harvard. We have students in Columbia, Princeton, MIT, Yale. I currently have a student who is a sophomore going into his junior year at University of Maryland who is this year interning with Google out in California. So that's definitely a success story. I will be early actioning to Harvard in the fall. So yes, Harvard is my first choice. I'm going to attend Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey. The Academy here in Woodbridge uh, from the rest of the district is our focus on allied health and biomedical science. Our students are considering careers in that model as compared to uh, the rest of the district which has their focuses on the career models within their buildings. The Woodbridge Academy helps me develop the skills that I need in order to become a neurosurgeon because of its medically focused classes. If you go to a normal high school, you get the standard English, math, science, and history, but there's no real focus on the career path that you are defining for yourself. At the Woodbridge Academy, our electives such as Principles of Biomedical Sciences and Human Body Systems are focused directly towards helping us become medical professionals. Specifically in these classes, we learn things such as gel electrophoresis, surgical techniques, septic methods, and all these techniques kind of help, in aggregate, help me to become, or help me on the path to become a neurosurgeon. I believe that we are working as, a, as district-wide is allowing the students to not only be ready, if that's what they choose, to go directly into a career, and or prepare them for college as well. So I think the difference here at Woodbridge Academy is we focus heavily on academics. That will certainly transition the students well into a regular, rigorous college setting. Being here at the Academy is very different and first and foremost because of the small, small size. Both the entire student body as well as individual classrooms we get a very uh, individual and special approach from the teachers and that's very important because they're able to identify both our weaknesses and our strengths and that goes for every single individual. They know everybody exactly by name and they know every little thing about us that would help them in helping us in turn with our academic struggles and our academic endeavors. I've been able to have the distinct privilege of infusing my previous clinical practice and best practices into the current needs of healthcare, future healthcare providers. I'm going to college at uh, Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. I'm in the Honors College. The college which I want to attend is currently is Penn State University. Penn State has a six-year medical program. Basically, this means that there's a two-year undergrad program at Penn State, and then you automatically transfer to Thomas Jefferson Medical School, which is located in Philadelphia. They grow from year to year, and by the time they leave, we're, we're confident, they're confident, that they do have the skills to go into a college setting and be successful and know how to integrate what they've learned into academic settings, but also knowing that they are, they are gonna have the support that they need. I was really glad that I had this opportunity and it really prepared me for college as well as the real world because 
nowhere else do I think I would have experienced such a small snapshot of life in these past four years. In terms of the school, I think that anyone that does want to go into medicine, anyone that wants to be inspired to go into medicine, anyone that might have the slightest hint that they want to go into medicine, it's a school that they should definitely consider. Let's face it, we want what is best for our kids. And as a society, I think our philosophy is changing. Because when I grew up, it was college, 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 you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college. And I think today the mindset is a lot different. I think people are more educated, but I think we have to show them what, these program, what the programs are here to offer. Part of the uniqueness of our school system is the uniqueness of our students. We have interests for those students that don't function as well as they should in a traditional school. Many times I'm asked about our school and about vocational education and it's amazing to me how many people ask, is this a regular high school? We have basketball, baseball, we have sports, we have clubs, so many other organizations just like any other high school. And people, because it's vocational and technical, really put it in a different category. But these are high school students that come and go to proms and have dances and have all the other experiences that a high school student would have. And so we are a high school. We have to be trailblazers for the next generation and making sure that we're preparing our kids for the next need that's going to be coming up. You know, there's too many jobs that are going away overseas and uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent that we can do everything right here in America, but we have to educate our, our kids. And if we don't do that, we're in a sorry state. I hope uh, for the future of a Middlesex County Vote Tech graduate is that they have the fundamental preparation that they've acquired here in the academic skill areas as well as a quest for knowledge and a passion for their career major. My hope for the graduate of our school is that their decision to come here is validated. They went through us, they learned a lot, they're challenged and they're prepared to do whatever choice or whatever career that they choose from. Whether they want to go to college, they're prepared to handle the rigor of college. Whether they want to go for work, they're prepared to enter their workforce. I want them to look back at this time saying, I made that right decision. I'm a better person because of this school. My hope is that they go on to education beyond high school and uh, get into the field uh, that, that, that they do or find a career that they like. My wishes and hopes for my students going forward is that they find the career path that they are the most comfortable in, areas that they can challenge themselves in, and areas where they can be, um, they can reach their fullest potential and give back. My hope for an MCBTS graduate is for them to leave here, to leave my shop with um, confidence with an awareness of who they are, but also an awareness of the world beyond these school walls, beyond their neighborhood, beyond their country, to understand that we're all interconnected, to have integrity, and to have skills that equip them to become anything that they want. to pick one word to describe MCVTS, it would be interesting. Inspiring. Education. Impactful. Education. Awesome. Possibilities. 
It's extraordinary. So rewarding. Enlightened. Unique. The rewarding. It's just life changing. I present to you the class of 2014. They come across that stage, and I hope that each and every one of these young people, their future is bright, there's a future for them to make a living, and that they can live the American dream.